What's going on everyone? I'm back talking about a Canon camera that I've uh, been getting a number of requests to review. Got in my hands for the past couple of weeks. Here it is, the little brother to the R5, the Canon R6. Like always, big shout out to Canon Singapore for helping us with the camera and the various lenses we have for this review. However, these are my thoughts, my thoughts only. Let's talk about the R6. Talking about the R6 here, it's pretty much the younger brother to the R5. I mean, there are some differences which I'll talk about, but if you want to see my overall thoughts on the R5, which will be very similar to the R6, do click on this link right here. That's my R5 review. However, I will go over some of the, uh, the bigger points and then we'll talk about it in terms of image quality. We'll go into Lightroom, we'll see what the images look like. We'll talk about the various lenses I have, including the 800 millimeter F11 with the two times teleconverter. See how that works out. Uh, plus this 85.12 and the 15.35. Anyway, some of the differences between the R5. The biggest difference, of course, is the sensor. It's a 20 megapixel sensor, the same as the 1DX Mark III versus the 45 megapixel sensor in the R5. Also, the EVF is uh, slightly le less resolution. It's a 3.69 million dot EVF versus the 5.76 million dot EVF on the R5. The display in the back is slightly smaller at three inches versus 3.2 inches and it's slightly less resolution. But I'll tell you what, day-to-day -day operation, you won't notice a lot of those differences, to be frank with you. Uh, this camera performs beautifully. The EVF is fantastic. The display is great. It feels very much like an R5. Also, you don't have that top display. Instead, you have a manual mode dial on that, which some might like or might dislike. For me, it doesn't make a difference. As long as it works, I'm happy with it. You don't have a CF Express card slot in this, folks. You only have two UHS-2 card slots. I do wish there was a CF Express card slot, especially for the price point of this camera, but that is another topic later on in this review. Besides that, that's the camera. 12 uh, frames per second mechanical and electronic first curtain shutter, 20 frames per second electronic shutter, same as the R5. In terms of the autofocusing, you have the dual pixel two autofocusing system, the same as the R5. It's even better than the 1DX Mark III. So you've got all those bases covered, that fantastic animal tracking everyone's talking about. It's in this as well. You know what, to be frank with you, I'm just gonna sum up this review really quick. I'll go into all the details in just a second, but here, the camera works. It just works. I'm not gonna talk about video in this review because there's about 5,000 videos that do that same thing and they all say the same exact thing. It overheats at times. Yes, I wish it was this, I wish it was that. Let's wait for, for more update from Canon, so I'm not gonna talk about it. This is all gonna be about photography because guess what? These cameras, they take great photos. Canon might not tell you that and a lot of reviewers might not tell you that, but I will tell you that. This takes great photos. Now, let's talk about what it's like to use. So let's talk about what the R6 is like to use. Pretty much like the R5. It does, it actually is pretty much the same camera. Um, I took this out on a professional photo shoot that I did here recently. And the one thing that just stood out to me more than anything else is that I didn't have to worry if my shots were in focus or not. Canon's autofocusing system is fantastic. The upgrades to the R5 and the R6 are tremendous. Um, to me, it's one of the best, if not the best, autofocusing system in a camera right now to date. Eye tracking, animal tracking, it is all there. So, I mean, case in point, I was doing a photo, uh, photo session. I had it two hours with a client to do four different looks in various different locations around Marina Bay Sands, where we're at right now actually filming, coincidentally. Uh, coincidence for that. And, you know, you need a camera that works when you need it to work that can lock on focus, that can get the shot, the shot that's tack sharp, and then you can move on. And that's what this camera did. I did use one lens, one lens only. I had a few lenses with me, but I only had the 85.12, and it stayed on the camera the entire time. This lens, I've talked about it in my previous EOS R review. I'll talk about it again. It's phenomenal. This is, to me, one of the best 85 millimeter lenses on the market, hands down. At 1.2, it focuses really quick on the R6. It's exceedingly fast. You don't need to worry about uh, any slow focusing on this at all. So if you have the EF version of the 85 and you're thinking, is the RF gonna be that slow? No, it is a lightning quick. And the images out of this are fantastic.
This lens is designed to resolve at a higher megapixel. That's why you see it on the R5, and it resolves those images beautifully on the R6 they're tack sharp. So while this is a 20 megapixel sensor, the one thing that I noticed, and I'll show you this in Lightroom in just a bit, is that the image quality that I'm getting out of this sensor feels more like a 24 to 30 megapixel image versus a 20 megapixel. And that is a lot to do with the lens. A higher resolving lens will give you a much better looking image overall. So hats off to Canon for this lens and for all the RF lenses for that matter, because they all perform beautifully. Now, let's talk about some other lenses I have with me in the bag right now. So here I'm gonna talk about my new vlogging lens, you know, because we all need an 800 millimeter vlogging lens, right? For that really up close shot, I'm joking. <laughs> You're not gonna vlog with this. This is the 800 millimeter F11 lens. This, uh, this and the 600 millimeter were recently launched. I got the 800 millimeter because I'm gonna do some bird photography, which I'll show you in just a bit in the Lightroom portion of this review. Um, this is a very budget friendly 800 millimeter lenses because most of the times when you buy it, you know, any sort of super telephoto lens like this, you're gonna have to sell off a kidney on eBay, right? But not the case. Canon understands that kidneys are very valuable. We might not wanna sell them on eBay. We wanna keep them in our body. So they decided to come out with an F11 variant of this. So you're probably thinking to yourself, F11, can I even use this lens? And you can. You can actually use this lens at F11. You get some great bokeh out of this. Um, it's fast focusing. Now I do have to let you know that the focusing box is not the entire sensor, okay? It's a small box, you see it through the EVF. So this is more of, um, I would say you've got about a 35 to 40% focusing area. It's in the center of the frame. It's not a deal breaker. It's just something you need to take uh, notice of. But if you're doing any sort of wildlife photography or anything else, you want that animal or that subject, or if you're doing sports photography in the center of the frame. So if you wanna crop around it, you can do so versus it being in the, the, the far left or the far right or the top and the bottom. So in that regard, it makes perfectly sense. You also have a stabilizer on this as well. So with the stabilizer in the lens and in the camera body, you have the eight stops of image stabilization throughout the R6, the same as you have on the R5. And the image stabilization on these R system cameras are fantastic. Some of the best, if not the best, I've used on any camera system to date. So you gotta give Kenan a tip to the hat on that one because while the EOS R didn't have any sort of image stabilization or neither did the other cameras for that matter, when they did bring it in, they did their homework and it's really good on this camera. Okay, so in terms of using this 800 millimeter F11, you've probably seen it. It's a little it's odd to turn it, pull it out, lock it, and there's your lens. This is very lightweight. While there is a tripod mount here, you can do this handheld, no issues at all. This is not a nighttime lens, folks. If you wanna use this at nighttime, you can, but it's at F11, so your ISO is gonna be cranked up all the, all the way. This camera can do up to 102,400 ISO. I would never shoot at that uh, number, but you know, 10, 12, maybe 20,000 ISO, you're gonna get some somewhat decent images out of this camera. But again, to each their own at F11, you're really pushing it. So you want this at daylight, or even uh, slightly overcast, what we're using right here, it's relatively good. If I drop the shutter speed down to about, uh, went over 60, I can get uh, a very low ISO. <laughs> Again, but with the image stabilization on this camera lens, it actually works relatively well. Okay, I also have the 1535 with me, but you've seen the 1535 all the time. I'm not gonna really talk much about it. Let's go into Lightroom. Let's see images with the 85-1-2, the 1535, and this 800 F11 with the two times teleconverter. I have that in the bag as well. All right, everyone, we are now in Lightroom taking a look at images from the R6, the RF8512, as well as the 800 millimeter F11 lens. In addition, I did also use the two times teleconverter to show you those sample images in just a bit. First, let's talk about the RF85 1.2. One of my favorite 85 millimeter lenses, hands down. At 1.2, it focuses fast, it's sharp, it's got great fall off. It's a fantastic lens, folks, but it's a very big lens. Here's a photo shoot I did with Joseph Schooling, who's an ambassador for Hugo Boss in Southeast Asia, as well as Singapore's first gold medal winner in the Olympics. And I had four looks I had to uh, capture with him in less than two hours. We were able to do it. Eye tracking, good camera performance, and good lenses help a lot. Case in point, here's an image I took with him. 85 1.2. Look how sharp this is, folks, in the eyes. The eyelashes, the skin tone, but the fall off to the background, 
I love this image, the intensity, how it just captures everything that I wanted to capture. And this is just natural lighting, folks, just using window lighting and this lens at 1.2, it's really that good. Here's another image from this shoot. This is Joseph on a couch here. Now I'm just gonna give you some specs on this. This is ISO 125, one over one hundredths of a second. Let's just punch in on that. Sharp eye tracking is fantastic on the Canon R6 as well as the R5 and the 85 1.2, it locks on like a sniper. Uh, here's a low light performance uh, shot here. This is uh, Joseph kind of hanging out on this couch here. Now this was after edit, this is before edit. This is at ISO 500, 85 millimeters at f 1.2, 1 13th of a second handheld. And I'm getting images like that. The IBIS on this camera is no joke, and you'll see that in the bird photography in just a bit. And let's just look at a, one more image here. And this is uh, Joseph here on the railway here at the boardwalk at MBS. Again, the 85 1.2 lens is a very versatile lens if you know how to use it. You can capture some fantastic images. And it really gives the, R, the R6 image quality comparable to a 24 to even 30 megapixel camera because of the sharpness of this lens combined with the sensor. I can't say enough about this combo. Really happy with it. Now let's move on to some bird photography here because I've got an 800 millimeter F11 lens. When you probably heard of this lens announced, you probably thought the same as I did is, what am I gonna do with this lens? Am I gonna get any depth of field? Am I gonna get, is it gonna be just really bad image quality because it's F11, so anything beyond bright sunshine how is it gonna perform? Let's look at some sample images right now. Here's a, a flamingo that I took a photo of at the Drawing Bird Park here. This is, a, this is at ISO 800, F11 of course, because that's the only aperture you got on this lens, one over 640th of a second, animal eye tracking, doesn't matter what bird it is, the camera picks it up and look at this, it's sharp. Look at the feather, look at the detail at ISO 800, and look through the depth of field on this. I know, yeah, of course, I was quite a bit of distance away to capture the flamingo in frame because it's an 800 millimeter lens, but look, it looks good. For this lens that is very inexpensive for 800 millimeters, it performed beautifully. Here's some other sh sample shots. Now, here's another bird here. I don't know the name of this bird. You can tell me what it is in the comment section if you do know it. Um, but I wanted to capture this bird, this eye, and of course, we got the leaves here. The animal eye tracking just locked on like a sniper. ISO 1250, one over 100th of a second. With an 800 millimeter lens, folks, I'm hand holding this. IS in the lens, IBIS in the body. You're getting some fantastic image stabilization. Let's punch in on that. Again, this has been edited. This is before edit, after edit. I want to kind of, you know, make the reds a little bit more prominent, the yellow, the greens. I mean, I'm really happy with this image. Look at the detail you're finding here in the feathers. Handheld, folks. ISO 1250. Okay. Here is a ringtail lemur here at the uh, bird park. ISO 2500, F11, one over 500 of a second. Look at this. I'm happy with it. You know, this is after edit. Here's before edit. Look at the detail on this. This is pretty impressive for ISO 2500, but look at the, uh, the depth of field on this. Again, I'm really liking how this lens performs. Here's another bird. I have no idea what this breed is, but look how sharp this is. Look at the beak here, the eye, ISO 800, one over 200 of a second. It's just the detail is really phenomenal that you're getting out of this. Now, we've got here, this image right here, ISO 800, 1600 millimeters, F22, one over 100th of a second. Handheld, animal eye tracking, I'm happy with it. Now, when you are using a teleconverter, your image quality will suffer a little bit. It's not gonna be much, but you will see a difference in image quality from using the lens with and without it, okay? But again, for a lens that is below $2,000 for Singapore pricing, with a two times teleconverter on it to get this kind of image quality, I'm really happy with it. Uh, here's another image with that two times solar converter on this. Look at this. Animal eye tracking comes into play, the detail, the feathers, the beaks. Here is uh, before edit, after edit, before edit, after edit, happy with the image. Here's another one for you as well, before and after. Again, edits are personal pro, uh, preference you might like or dislike, but just want to kind of highlight that for you. Look at this image. ISO 12,800, one over 320th of a second. 
I've got a lot of detail here. Now I'm never going to punch in this close on an image. I'm just showing this to you for, you know, proof of uh, performance. But look at this. Look at the detail I'm able to capture with 12,800 ISO. I'm really happy. Here's a Philippine Eagle. This one, I do know the, the name of it. I had to shoot through a fence. Um, did uh, change the image quite a bit here just to kind of make the Eagle punch out a little bit more. This is before edit, of course, after edit. Edits are personal preference, but I'm really happy with this. Able to do this. I had to do this manual focus, of course, because of the fence. Not 100% sharp, but I, it's decent. You know what I mean? It'll work. Social media, website, it'll do the job. Now, let's look at low light performance indoors with the 800 millimeter lens. ISO 25,600 F11, one over 640th of a second. Let's just uh, punch in on this. Now, look at the grain on this. This is a very usable image. I didn't do any edit to this image at all. If I wanna do some noise reduction, I can reduce that quite a bit, but it has a very film-esque look to this. It, feel, it reminds me of like shooting with 1600 film, okay? so. You got to hand it to Canon for really controlling the uh, the ISO, the noise levels into the image, really making more like making it look more like film versus some other cameras out there that went at, you know, 25,800 or 600 for that matter. It's really bad. This is a usable image. You can still see the detail within his uh, plaid shirt here, the buttons, his face, his hair. Got to hand it to Canon on this and this lens. It works relatively well. So for you guys out there that want to get an 800 millimeter or 600 millimeter lens at a price point that is very affordable and you want to get into some wildlife photography, birding photography, or even some sports photography, try out these lenses. You might be very surprised at how good they perform. Anyway, let's move on to my final thoughts on the camera and the lenses right now. So if you're wondering what the two times teleconverter looks like on an 800 millimeter F11 lens, here you go. I love to shoot at f22 at 1600 millimeters, don't you? <laughs> but actually, as you saw in Lightroom, the images aren't that bad. Um, this is a very uh, budget-friendly way to get maximum telephoto images. Of course, I would love to have it f2.8, but then the size of this setup would be, I would need Kai Hong to stop filming and help <laughs> me carry the lens around because it would be that heavy. But overall, my thoughts on the R6 is, it's just a camera that works. And that's the one thing that always stood out to me. It just works. The image quality out of the 20 megapixel sensor is fantastic, especially paired with the RF lenses. Um, it's fast, the autofocusing is really good. And like I mentioned in my R5 review, it's about a firmware update or two away from being better than anything else on the market when it comes to autofocusing. It really is that good. Canon has just done a tremendous job. The IBIS in this camera is great. Um, yes, it is. Yes, I wish it was a 24 or 30 megapixel uh, sensor on this because of the price point. I think 20 is a little bit too low, especially if you want to crop in. But if you're just doing photography for social media, for websites, then this is more than adequate. But let's talk about the price for a moment on this camera because this is where the biggest downside to me on this camera is it's the price point. Here in Singapore, it's coming around $3,999. Uh, the US pricing is 2,500 USD. And honestly speaking, I feel that's a little bit too much for this camera system. I think this, is, this should be coming in at under 2,000 USD or even uh, around 3,000 Singapore dollars because you got the EOS R, then you got the RP, and then you've got other competitors out there like an A7 III or other, you know, let's say a Nikon Z6 or even Z7 and you're around that, that $4,000 price tag. I mean, you're kind of going, well, does that make sense? Is Canon really overpricing this thing? And I think that they are. I mean, sure, there will be some rebates or probably some package deals that are coming out, you know, sooner rather than later. But I think while I appreciate the technology that Canon's done in this, and I don't want to discredit that, the price point is just too high for the R6 in my personal opinion. But if you do get a great deal from your local camera shop or even from online from Canon, whatever country you're in and you're on the fence about getting the R6 or not, I'll tell you what, this camera really is fantastic in terms of image quality and performance. So yeah, if you get a good deal, get the R6. If you don't, wait for the better deal because it will always come.
Trust me on that. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the R6. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like always, follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Holy cow, this is a very long lens. And I'll chat to you really soon. <laughs> Take care.